Was there ever any thought or interest in science? Yes, as a boy, I was I was interested in science. But very, it got you. But it got turned off. Yeah, that's I what was, happens to so many kids. I was uh, interested. I, I uh, my parents bought me uh, at my urging a microscope a mi- and, uh, and a chemistry uh, kit, maybe a Lionel chemistry of set. Yeah, those were great. And uh, with the cabinets that opened, yeah. and there's many chemicals yeah. in it. And but I I didn't have the the strength of character, or the or the richness of of you know, curiosity, or the I didn't have it. I was there was nobody's fault but my own. I just because they when I expressed interest, they did. My parents did get me the microscope and did get me the the chemistry set years later. But but I. I, I just wasn't, I was a goof off. I was a okay, kid that a, wanted to watch baseball rather than, uh, and then when I got older, um, I became interested in all these, or, you know, physics mm-hmm. and uh, astronomy, I, interested in only in that the large questions, the unanswerable yeah. questions, uh, I came to the conclusion were the only questions worth asking or dealing with. Sure. Um, because, yes, of course, there's a great deal of difference if you're living under communism mm-hmm. or socialism or democracy, or and there's a great deal of difference in, in your living day to day and all these things that make up the warp and woof of politics. But in the end, if you had an ideal society and it was everybody who had enough money and everybody had their health and everything everything was great and there was no war and there was no climate change everything was solved you would still be faced with these terrifying unanswerable issues you still wouldn't be happy you say well yeah i got everything and <laughs> and then you think to yourself it would become even more poignant because <laughs> you'd be saying gee i'm I'm going to lose all this one day. Uh, it's all going to be taken away from me. Now, if your life is not so good, if you're struggling mm. to make a buck or to think up a couple of good jokes for the second act of mm. a play or trying to get your invention patented or something, you know, you're concentrated on a small thing and it takes your mind off that. Yeah. And so you, but in the end, sooner or later, if you accomplish everything you want in life, you still come up against these big questions, and the big questions are terrifying, and they're you know they're they're, they're no satisfactory answers, and so uh, I keep coming back to them mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah, sure, yeah, because so they're nagging. You're... Yeah, sure. They're, they're not the kind of questions you can say, "Well, can't answer that," and no one will ever answer <laughs> it. So. But that's just, the scientific part of you. That's what the fact that you keep coming back to. I mean, I'm a physicist, a theoretical physicist, because it's those deep questions that intrigue me, and I keep liking to a- ask them and return to them. And for me, almost the questioning is as important as the answering. The fact that you keep searching, I guess, I find the conclusion equally the same: that the universe is meaningless and it's all going to end miserably. <laughs> but right, you but, you you want. The answers, but it isn't necessarily the answers you want. You want a certain set of answers, and it's not the answers that you're getting. Well, uh, no, I'm willing to take whatever the universe gives me, and it doesn't bother me that the universe is going to end miserably. Um, it's sort of uh, for me. It's always kind of, and we'll why, get to why it because I want to talk. Bother you? It's a, it's a, it's a worrisome thought. It's a bothersome thought that uh, that the universe is flying apart and is everything will be gone. It's, but it makes it more. It makes the fact that you and I are here chatting so much more amazing to me. I guess that's my attitude: is that yes, we're cosmically insignificant, and we're going to be gone, and human civilization is going to end, and no, the universe doesn't care about us. In fact, it's trying to kill us in many ways. Doesn't matter, and the, and it's sure it's expanding, and it's eventually going to become dull, cold, dark, and empty. But hey, that means what an incredible f- stroke of fortune it is for me to have this little. Time with you. No, you have, you have to think about these things in fairly grim <laughs> terms. Sophocles said, "You know, better never to have been born at yeah. all." That's the greatest blessing. You, I don't know. You're you're here for a short amount of time, and uh, 
and you search for answers. Yeah. But it, uh, I feel that I'm not, I've never been searching, I've been searching for the answers I want to hear. <laughs> I don't want to come up with the answers you come up with. Yeah. You, as a physicist, mm -hmm. come up with substantial answers about the real structure and working of... But those are not fun answers to hear. They're not soothing answers. Well, they're not soothing, but they are inspiring because they must, it, you, because it must resonate with you at some level because you learned enough about it to know that matter is decaying or or that the universe is expanding. They're, <laughs> I they're was hoping it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> you know? I mean, 